flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City Council meeting. Let the record show that all members of the City Council are present this evening. There's a copy of the Open Meetings Act posted in the meeting room on the west wall and is accessible to the public at any time during the course of this meeting. First item on the agenda is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. First item on the agenda, item A, approve agenda as submitted. Item B, receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. Item C, receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. Item D, approval of minutes of regular meeting on December 4th, 2017 as on file in the city clerk's office. Item E, approval of treasurer's report of claims in the amount of $758,157.73. Item F, approval of Boswell report of claims in the amount of $99,228.51. Item G, resolution number 6154, entering into a concession license agreement with Beatrice Bullets Baseball Inc. to license the bullets to sell food and drinks out of the concession stand at the Scott Street ball fields. Item H, resolution number 6155, designating real estate on the east side of Sherman Street from Scott Street to Court Street as a public right-of-way, allowing lots adjacent thereto access to the public street. Item I, resolution number 6156, granting J. Husker Antique Car Club and their designees permission to sell or offer for sale or peddle goods, wares, or merchandise, merchandise upon city property located in Chautauqua Park on the dates of June 15, 2018 through June 17, 2018. Item J, resolution number 6157, approving an application, Nebraska Energy Management, Nebraska Emergency Management Agency to update the city's hazard mitigation plan. Item K, resolution number 6158, restating the City of Beatrice Board of Public Works Employee Health Plan as of January 1, 2018. Item L, resolution number 6159, entering into an administrative service agreement with Allegiance for the administration of the city's self-funded employee health plan and the city's reimbursement accounts. Item M, resolution number 6160, entering into an agreement to have Allegiance Benefit Plan Management Inc. process claims for the cafeteria plan, including a dependent care flexible spending account and health flexible spending account. Item N, resolution number 6161, entering into a stop loss agreement with Companion Life Insurance Company for the city's self-funded employee health plan. And finally, item O, resolution number 6162, entering into an, a business associate agreement relating to the handling and security of protected health information transferred in conjunction with the performance and administration of the city's self-funded employee health plan. Is there any item a council member or citizen wants removed from the consent agenda? Mr. Catlin? Mayor, I would move that all the items listed under the consent excuse agenda me. be approved, accepted. Meeting? Excuse me, just I'm a minute. I'm sorry. I have to abstain from D. Uh, Joe's going to abstain from item D. Okay. So noted. All right, Mr. Catlin, sorry. I would move that all the items listed under the consent agenda be approved, accepted, and or ratified as presented. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Morgan, that all items under the consent agenda be approved. Your vote, please. And that is approved. Gentlemen. That is approved 7-0. I made a mistake earlier. All council members are present with the exception <coughs> of Councilman Cook. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing. Public hearing on the acquisition of real property from Sharon Kunzel. Described as follows, Lot 10 and 11, Block 11, Riverside Park, in addition to Beatrice, Gage County, Nebraska, partial ID number 0141330000, commonly referred to as 1118 South 7th Street. This is a property at 7th and Tate Street. Uh, it's, if you go down around Chautauqua Park area, um, it's on the northeast <coughs> corner of 7th and Tate. Um, the building inspections department had the opportunity to inspect this building here recently. 
uh, determined that it was one of those that probably needed to be uh, demolished. We contacted the owner of the property in Ms. Um, Kunzel. She was willing to deed the property over to the city and give us $2,000 uh, to offset the cost of demolition as part of the, the transaction. We already own the lot to the north of this. It's a vacant lot. We already own that. We bought as part of the floodplain buyout. This house sits below the street, mm -hmm. and so it sits in the floodplain. Our plan is to demolish this house, turn it into green space, and add it to part of the park that's down there already. Good. Um, have no problem with it. Think it's a great idea. Um, I guess my only question is the demolition. Notice how well the city's crew, and I don't know who's doing it because I don't see it done, but I see the before and after of how they're doing on the property on First Street. And I'm wondering if we just can't do that ourselves. This isn't a big profit. This isn't a big structure. It, it's not a big structure. Um, sometimes we don't always have the right machinery. The one we're taking down on First Street, there's no basement. Oh. You know, some of these that have basements, we need more of a, a track hoe, and we don't have one of those. Uh, certainly means we could rent one. Uh, what we found is we've had good luck packaging our various uh, yep. demolitions yep. and bidding them out at one time. We've got some good prices, yeah, we're we going to try that again this year, okay. and this will be one of those properties. I noticed that you had one down on uh, the 900 block of Elk. Yes. Is, that, is that one that we took down as well? No, the 900 block of Elk was taken down by the property owner. Okay. That's all I got. Any other questions? Anyone from the public? Mr. Catlin, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mayor, I move that the public hearing be closed at 7.07 p.m. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Billsbach, that the public hearing be closed at 7.07 .07 p.m. And your vote, please. And that is approved 7-0. Next is a public hearing on the acquisition of real property from Marina Stansberry, <coughs> known as Marina Soto, described as follows, lot 10, Block 32, Original Town of Beatrice, Gage County, Nebraska, partial ID number 00953400, commonly referred to as 916 Ella Street. As the address indicates, this is the 900 block of Ella Street. Uh, probably the best way to describe it is across the street from Dan Mainz's property on Ella Street. <coughs> is the best idea of where it's located. We tore this house down about 18 months ago. Uh, we've been trying to find a way to recover our cost for some time we were finally able to make contact with the property owner she is willing to deed the property over to us uh, in return we do have a judgment against her we'll mark that judgment as satisfied uh, in return for the receiving the lot as far as future plans with the lot we have been in contact with property owners that are next to it who are interested in acquiring the lot uh, they have a rental property there now they look to build a garage combine the two lots and, and maybe sell those off in the future so that would be our plans with it Questions? How much we got in this property? Like if I remember right, demolition was about $6,500. Did they say what they might give us for it? It will not be $6,500. Well, sure that, but <laughs> you know, we'll, as long as we don't have to mow it, I don't care. Yeah, we'll, we'll. I mean, we'll try. We haven't gotten that far in negotiations. Simply indicate that they're interested, and we'll see okay. what we can do from there. It'll come to us at a subsequent meeting. Yeah. You know. Any questions from the public? Mr. Catlin? Mayor, I would move that the public hearing be closed at 7.09 p.m. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Billsbach. Public hearing be closed at 7.09 p.m. Your vote, please. That is approved 7-0. Next is a public hearing on the acquisition of real property from Farmers Cooperative, described as real estate near the intersection of First and Grand Street, City of Beatrice, Gage County, Nebraska, Parcel ID numbers are 00937100, number 01439500, and number 01439600. These are the last parcels down around that first and Grant Street area that the city uh, needed to acquire to obtain all of those down there. We were able to negotiate with Farmers Co-op, but they've agreed to sell these three parcels off to the city at $20,000. Uh, they will are in the process of removing all the 55 gallon uh, drums that are down there now so those will all be removed uh, when it's done uh, the city will come in and clear off the, what's left of the property there it's a quonset and some um, some concrete will remove those items and then it'll become part of the rest of the area down there which is the long-term plan just plant that back to some type of native grass maybe mow some type of walking strip through there a walking path of some sort uh, and just turn it back to nature it's all in the floodplain. Nothing can ever be built there again. 
Uh, we had the environmental review done. We know it's down there as far as environmental hazards are concerned. So that kind of our long-term plan with that property. Butterfly and bee friendly? That'd be the hope. That'd be my hope. Any other questions? Yes, I think I did. Mr. Party? <clears throat> are we paying 20000 a lot or all three? Total for all three parcels. Okay, I just want to make sure we weren't going. Okay. Thank you. You were doing the math quick, right? Any other comments or questions? I did hear that. I did see it. From the public. All right, Mr. Catlin. May I move that the public hearing be closed at 7 11 p.m.? Second. With my Catlin second by Morgan, that the public hearing be closed at 7 11 p.m. Your vote, please. That is approved 7 0. Next item is resolution number 6163 executing all necessary documents to acquire real estate from Sharon Kunzel. We've already talked about this. Is there any other questions that the council may have? Catlin? Uh, Mayor, I would move the resolution number 6163 be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin, seconded by Billsbach. That resolution number 6163 be passed and adopted. Any further discussion? Your vote, please. That is approved 7-0, resolution number 6163, and passed and approved. Next item is resolution number 6164, <coughs> executing all necessary documents to acquire real estate from Marina Stansbury, also known as Maria Soto. Mayor, I have a move that resolution number 6164 <coughs> be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin, seconded by uh, Morgan. Resolution number 6164 be passed and adopted. Any further discussion on that real estate transaction? Seeing none, your vote please. And that is approved 7-0. Resolution number 6164 has been passed and approved. Next is resolution number 6165, executing all necessary documents to uh, uh, acquire real estate from Farmers Cooperative. Mayor, I would move that resolution number <coughs> 61 65 be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin, seconded by Kerr, that resolution number 61 65 be passed and adopted. <coughs> Claybaugh, beg your pardon. Any further discussion on that transaction? All right, and your vote, please. That is approved to 7 0. Resolution number 61 65 has been passed and approved. Next item is resolution number 6166, entering into an energy management agreement with Tanaska Power Services Company, wherein Tanaska Power Services Company agrees to perform energy management services for the city's share of the output from the Cottonwood Wind Project, as recommended by the Board of Public Works. Mayor, I would move that resolution number 6166 be passed and adopted. Second. By Catlin. Seconded by Billsbach that resolution number 6166 be passed and adopted. Tobias? Since we bought into the Cottonwood Wind Farm, uh, which is located out around the Hastings area, it is generating energy and we need to find a way to sell that energy into the market. You need somebody to do that actively. Uh, we could do it in-house, however, we lack the staff or the expertise, quite frankly, to do that and do it efficiently in-house. And so the option is to go out and find a, a market participant like Tanaska to be the ones who look at the forecasting, the day ahead market, and actively trading uh, your energy into those markets. And so what you have before you is an, an agreement to hire Tanaska to be that market participant for us. Uh, we did look at a couple of other ones. Um, and uh, you can see John Kraske went out and did some reviews, but his recommendation is that we hire on Tanaska to do uh, that market participant services for us. Uh, we did have the final contract uh, negotiated today, and so it's done and, and ready to be signed. Uh, it's, I think, 39 pages long. If anybody would like to read that, we can go over it here. But, uh, <laughs> but we spent some time going through that to make sure everybody understands exactly how it works. Um, but in short, what will happen is the city of Beatrice will sell our energy to Tanaska. Tanaska then will sell it in the market and then credit it back for the um, for the price that they were able to sell it for in the market. And so at the end of the day, Tanaska will receive all the, the money back from SPP. They'll deduct out the fees they're charging us and then send us back uh, the surplus funds, if you will, uh, from this transaction. This agreement's for three years, because remember right, for about the first three years as we exit MPPD, 
we cannot bring the cottonwood wind energy back here uh, just due to the fact of our current contracts and how those are all worded the lease gets us through that first three-year period then we can reevaluate if it makes more sense for us to bring the energy back here and use it or continue to, to market it into the the spp is that a, i'm sorry go ahead rich is that a flat fee or is it a percentage it's a flat fee of eighty five hundred dollars a month and then what happens is based upon some of the derivatives they're going to be selling into the market uh, we split the proceeds that are made off of that Tenasca keeps 30 percent of those profits we get the other 70 percent of those um, so that'll help offset the cost yes so Ted nope. hang on Jeff. okay so <clears throat> just so I understand it, when they're selling this and you said it's the day before do they sell this by the day the week the month you usually sell it by the day. You, you, you do usually sell it by the yes. day? Yes. So right now, every day I get a wind forecast for tomorrow. Okay. And there's three different models you can look at. Right. And it's, you know, how conservative do you want to be? But then it, it j expects how much energy you think you'll produce the next day at certain hours of the day. And you're selling it by the hour, by the day uh, wow. into the market. Um, actually, the SPP settles every five minutes. Every five minutes, there's a new price at the node that you have to keep up on. And they have guys that sit at the desk and stare at those five minute nodes and know when to buy and sell um, based on what numbers are coming through. Right. And that Tenasca is gonna do that? Tenasca is gonna do that. They do it now, I mean, that's, they're, pretty, they're a large company, but that's what they do now. Isn't that in Abby's contract? I, w I wish she had the time to do that, but we have a few other more important things for her to work on, so, I think. So most of this is, most of this buy and sell is done by computer, right? I would imagine they have some computer programs that say, hey, we're going to buy this price, we're going to sell at this price, and I imagine that's what they've got built in. Rick? That's really high. Bob, I guess, uh, what, what do we expect, like, the net charges to be? What, do you have, you have any idea? Because I'm, I'm, frankly, a little surprised that they're charging that much. But, I mean, that's quite a bit. That adds quite a bit to our cost. Well, we had figured in when... Would when that we, surprise you, how much that was? No, because if you looked at what the other places out there were charging, uh, they're all in the same ballpark. Uh, I think if one of the other proposals we had was about seven thousand dollars, but there were not there was no price sharing on any of the other offsets that, or any of the derivatives. Um, I think if you read through Kraski's review, uh, he believes that those derivatives will be enough to help offset their additional charges uh, month in and month out. Well, we knew that we'd have some market participant cost w as we went forward and, and got into this project. This is just more than I thought that it would be. Dollar wise, yeah, yeah. Had a little sticker shock on it too, and he said, "Yeah, that's a lot more than I thought it would be." I knew there'd be cost, but that's a lot more than I thought it would be. Bob, what do I do? I, well, I think Tobias answered my question. My question was, "Is the seven thousand just a flat rate?" Yes. And so, what we're really doing is going by the eighty-five hundred or eighteen thousand dollars more a year. We're banking on making that profit on that seventy-thirty split. You are. I think if you also look in there, the seven thousand dollar number came from Next Era. Right who also owns the wind farm. And so if you read through Kraski's review is, do you want them also being your market participant? Yeah, like or, the fox watching the chickens. Yeah. You, you, would you rather have another third party step in and, and doing what's in your best interest, maybe not necessarily what's in, if Next Era is doing both, they, and they're a very reputable company, I'm sure they wouldn't do it, but there may be a times where <coughs> what's in our best interest may not be in their best interest. Sure. And so this way you have Tenasca, who the only thing they're looking out for is you. I guess the only, in, in response to Rick, I, it, and I have the same thing, a little sticker shock on it. Obviously, we, we know we're still going to make money on the thing, in theory, but we haven't done it before. I guess what we'll have to look at is, you know, A, is there another company out there in the marketplace that does this for less, and B, do we still make money at the end of the, you know, I don't know at what time, you know, we have a three-year contract, obviously, but, you know, at what point do you review it and say, uh, we're not getting what we're paying for, so. Well, that's what I was going to ask. <coughs> do we need to do a three-year? Did they offer a shorter term than three years? Three years, pretty standard. There is an out provision. Um, if you do exercise the out provision, essentially they remain your market participant until you find another market participant to take over those services. SPP requires that. So, yeah. and they're going to look at your your billings every day from SPP and make sure that every day, every hour, every five minutes were the right numbers that came across. I mean, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that they're going to do. Um, but yes, you'll have the opportunity to go out and, and relook at those numbers. We did talk to AEP, but 
Uh, it's not something they were interested in doing at this time, was yeah. also managing the wind farm for us. And so you know, maybe three years from now, maybe those numbers change and you have more people that are interested. Any other questions? Mr. Gatlin? What do you think? We have a motion on the floor already. I beg your pardon. Any other questions? Your vote, please. That is approved 7 0. Resolution number 6167 has been approved. We have no ordinances tonight. Next item is the public forum. Purpose of the. We got to do this resolution. Oh, I missed that one. Beg your pardon. Next is resolution number 6167, entering into an agreement to loan $60,000 to Hevelone Building LLC, Robert M. Schaefer and Jeffrey W. Davis, for their building located at 112 to 116 North 6th Street as part of the Downtown Facade Improvement Program and CDBG Grant 15-DTR-109. Mayor, I would move that resolution number 6167 <coughs> Be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Morgan, that resolution number 6167 be passed and adopted. Uh, this right. is just another one of the downtown revolution grants. Um, Schaefer and, and Davis uh, have signed all the necessary documents that we've asked them to sign and presented those to you. If you haven't seen their plans, they've got significant plans for that building um, for a significant upgrade. It'll look, I think it'll look nice when they're done with it. Uh, this grants for $60,000. Again, same terms as all the other loans that are out there. They've got to meet all the um, requirements for SHPO and, and those types of things. But assuming they do all that, uh, just like everybody else, at the end of five years, uh, their loan would be forgiven. Um, other than that, it's all the same terms and conditions as every other one of these grants that we, and loans that we've done in the past. Which building is it? It's, it's the, where they used to be located, uh, just to the uh, south of Security First. It's just it's just off the alley. Yeah. It's the first building north of the alley. Well, they do they actually so, have both? I mean, do they have that whole yes. building structure? Okay. Right. They've got the whole the whole building there. Okay. There's two fronts to it, but yeah, it's one building. And if they sell the building, I mean, is that their plan here? I mean, what do they do if they sell this? If they sell it? Yeah. Are they, they're not, that's not their intent? No, no. their intent's to no. move back in there. They're currently oh. in, they're currently yeah, I know. in uh, Dick Smith's, not Dick Smith, but Dwayne Smith, Dwayne Dwayne. Smith's uh, office. And they're planning on uh, moving back. And they're moving back, yes. Ah, okay. <coughs> Any other questions? I know we've got two more pending. We have two more that are pending. Um, pending for different reasons. Both of them come down to exactly what does SHPO want. Uh, one is what kind of windows does SHPO want and how much does that increase the cost? And, and the other one is the same thing. Will SHPO be okay if we don't make quite all the improvements they're asking for? So we're working through those two. Okay, any other questions from the public? All right, gentlemen, your vote, please. And that is approved 7-0. Resolution, resolution number 6167 has been passed and approved. Now the public forum, purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. No discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Anybody from the council have anything for the public forum? From the public. All right, we'll move on to the city administrator's monthly report. I'll update you on a, on a few things. The property on first and grant sheet that we already own, if you haven't noticed, we started cleaning that up today. Uh, it'll be a process. It'll take us a while to go through there and get everything done, but we've started that process today. The street department's working on that. Uh, as long as the snow holds off, they're able to get to this. If it does start to snow, the project will get pushed on the back burner and they'll go do other things that they need to get taken care of. Uh, the mill and overlay project for next year should go out for bid this week. Uh, so we're going to get that out for bid and get that set in the, the schedule. Uh, and get the contractor here on site early and start working on that. One of the main streets next year that gets uh, part of that mill overlook project is Ella Street from I believe 3rd to 6th Street as part of that project. So that'll be a big, uh, a big portion of that project as we move forward. Two items that'll be coming before you sometime soon. Uh, first one is building codes. If you guys have been here for a while, you know that about every six years or so, we update our building codes uh, to match whatever the current edition is out there. Uh, we are ready to make the jump from the 2009 building codes to the 2015 building codes. 
Uh, Rob has done a very good job going through those, um, making sure that changes that have been made in those codes are applicable to us. They seem to make sense to us, and, and we're agreeable to those. Abby's been working on diligently putting that document together. Uh, we've got a few more reviews of it, and then we'll bring, present it to you. There'll be two big policy issues in there that I can think of off the top of my head that we'll present to you and have you uh, give us an answer on. Uh, one is weeds. At what height of weeds do you want us to send out mowing notices? Uh, right now it's 12 inches. Is that what you want to stick with? Do we want to go down to eight? Is it six? Is it 15? What number is it that you guys would like us to see in there? Uh, the other one is swimming pools. Quite honestly, um, we're not sure what to do with swimming pools. For a while, we required people to have some type of barrier, a fence, uh, a structure, something. And then we kind of moved away from that, and it was if they could take the ladder away, it was okay. Um, but then you got into the idea of, well, you have a lake, or you have a, a stream that runs through town, a river. People can wander into that any time. There's ponds right next door. You know, it seems odd that I, my pool has to have a fence, but the pond next to me doesn't. And so, again, just a policy thing to think about, which way do you want to do that uh, as we move forward? And so we don't know the answers to those two questions, but those will be a couple that I know that will come up to you as we present those. Uh, the other one is junk motor vehicles. I know we talked about it here before. Uh, we're working on that one. I think Abby's got a good draft of that put together. We've reviewed it a couple times. I think we found at least some answers to hit all the different questions we were coming up with last time um, to all the questions that are out in the public. You know, are they 100% accurate? Probably not, but at least it's a good starting point to start having some discussions again and making sure we're heading in the directions you guys would like to see us move forward. Does it also meet the suggestions of the building inspection department and uh, would help uh, uh, ease their um, processes? I think it will. Uh, there are some places where maybe short term you won't see the gains you're hoping for because you're trying to alleviate everybody's concerns that were out in the public. Um, but I think long term you'll see those set up and give us an opportunity to be successful. And I think it's, there's a give and take in there uh, to make sure everybody's comfortable with exactly which way direction you're going. Um, can we discuss a little thing or do you want to wait on this? I just, you can't I've got discuss a question. it now at this okay. point because uh, it wasn't on the agenda. Then I'll talk to you Friday. coming up here. At a future council meeting and we'll so. bring it we'll bring it back once abby has put together uh, the proposal we'll discuss it again <clears throat> i'll talk to you friday so other than that unless you guys have any questions about anything in particular but any there. questions anybody is that, that something you're still looking for comments on i mean is that still something you're looking for input for us on on the junk motor vehicle the motor vehicles the weeds absolutely I mean, as we bring them back to you we'll bring them <clears throat> They're not going to pass the first time we show them to you, and we know that. We well, want to bring them out. That's my question. I just at talk this about point, them. You want to, do you want us to contact you and say this is something that we'd like to have included, or this these are dates and times, or do you want us to wait till the meeting? Because I, I hate to have to wait till the meeting and say, why didn't you say something? We've got it all done. If you have ideas now, okay. we'd love to hear them. Okay. If you're not sure and you want to mold over some more and you want to wait till the meeting, that's fine too. And okay. Either one works for us. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, our next regular city council <coughs> meeting is going to be on January 2nd, 2018 at seven o'clock. There will not be a work session next week. And I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And with that, Mr. Catlin. Mayor, I would move that the meeting be adjourned at 7.29 p.m. Second. By Catlin, second by Billsbach, that the meeting be adjourned at 7.29 p.m. That's approved 7-0. Thank you, gentlemen.